Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 24th of June. India's ruling BJP-led NDA's presidential candidate Draupadi Murumu files nomination. Pakistan levies super tax on big industries to trim deficit clinch IMF deal. And Taliban deputy chief appeals for international aid after deadly Afghan earthquake. And now for all the details. India recorded 17,336 new daily infections of the coronavirus, the health ministry said on Friday, the highest single-day rise since February 20. India's richest state of Maharashtra recorded more than 5,200 new infections on Wednesday, with 2,479 of those coming from the financial capital of Mumbai. Delhi infections in India have been rising for the past month and the number announced on Friday was a jump of more than 4,000 from Thursdays which stood at 13,313. The number of daily deaths from COVID-19 went up by 13, the ministry said, taking total mortalities to 524,954. Health Minister Mansukh Mandviya, who reviewed the COVID and vaccination situation in the country on Thursday, stressed the need to focus on districts reporting high case positivity and undertake adequate testing and effective COVID-19 surveillance to assess and control the spread of infection in a timely manner. He exhorted to increase the pace of vaccination, including booster doses in districts reporting high cases. Moving on. Draupadi Murumu, the presidential candidate of India's ruling BJP-led National Democratic Alliance on Friday, filed her nomination for the election to be held in July. If elected, Murmu, a 64-year-old veteran politician, will become the first tribal and the second-ever female president of India. Draupadi Murmu, a female Indian politician from a tribal community, on Friday filed her nomination for the post of the country's president in the presence of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and leaders of the ruling BJP, the Bharatiya Janata Party. Murmu has been pitted by BJP-led National Democratic Alliance against opposition's candidate Yashwan Sinha. The 64-year-old veteran politician is almost certain to be elected as the BJP holds a majority in the parliament and is likely to get the support of other parties in state assemblies. If elected, she will become the first tribal and the second ever female president. The election for the largely ceremonial presidential post will be held on July 18. Born in a family of Santhal tribe, Murmu started her career as a school teacher and actively participated in tribal rights issues. She later joined mainstream politics and has held senior posts in eastern Odisha state and also served as the governor of Jharkhand state. The joint opposition's candidate, 84-year-old bureaucrat-turned-politician Yashwan Sinha, is a former finance minister and a BJP rebel. He has been a virulent critic of the Modi government since resigning from the BJP in 2018. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif on Friday announced that in order to control the storm of inflation, the government would be imposing a 10% super tax on large-scale industries. Finance Minister Mifta Ismail clarified it will be a one-time tax needed to curtail budget deficits and clinch a crucial bailout deal from the IMF. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif on Friday announced that the government will be imposing a 10% super tax on large-scale industries and also on affluent persons with more than Rs 150 million annual income with a rate up to 4% in a bid to shore up revenues for supporting the country's poor amid a storm of inflation. 
Sharif, in an address to the nation, stated the revenue generated from the super tax would be beneficial for poverty alleviation as the country is facing economic crisis. Finance Minister Mifta Ismail later clarified on Twitter that the super tax is a one-time tax needed to curtail the previous four record budget deficits to clinch a crucial deal from IMF, the International Monetary Fund. Smile called it a super tax pleading with large-scale industries to bear with it for just one year to help shore up revenues urgently required to cut the fiscal deficit and save the country from default. The IMF has been pushing Pakistan to raise revenues and cut expenditures to trim the budget deficit to be able to get its next loan tranche of $900 million that has been suspended since earlier this year. The South Asian nation desperately needs the IMF funding as it has been in the grip of financial crisis with foreign exchange reserves held by the central bank falling as low as $8.2 billion and the Pakistani rupee at record lows against the US dollars. In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan does not have enough medical supplies to treat the injured from an earthquake that killed 1,000 people, a senior official said on Friday, as authorities ended the search for survivors in remote southeastern mountains. Taliban deputy chief on Friday appealed for international aid. Meanwhile, five people were killed on Friday in eastern Afghanistan after fresh tremors shook areas close to the epicenter of Wednesday's earthquake. Eight and ambulances arrived on Thursday in Afghanistan's Pakdika province, where an earthquake killed 1,000 people, with Taliban officials on Friday saying that authorities have ended the search for survivors. The magnitude 6.1 earthquake struck early on Wednesday about 160 kilometers southeast of Kabul, in arid mountains dotted with small settlements near the border with Pakistan. Pakdika province remains one of the worst affected areas. About 2,000 people were injured and 10,000 houses were partially or completely destroyed in the early Wednesday earthquake, a senior official said. Mohammad Naseem Haqqani, a spokesperson for the disaster ministry, told Reuters that Afghanistan does not have enough medical supplies to treat the injured from the earthquake, as an aftershock on Friday killed five more people. The Taliban's deputy chief appealed for international aid on Thursday as they surveyed the devastation left by the earthquake. Japan, South Korea, Taiwan and the United Arab Emirates all said on Thursday they plan to send aid. India said it has sent 27 tons of supplies on two flights to be handed over to international aid agencies. Meanwhile, Afghan villagers grappled with losing their loved ones and homes. Poor communications and a lack of proper roads are hampering relief efforts in a country already grappling with a humanitarian crisis which has deteriorated since the Taliban took over last August. Nepal has begun administering anti-COVID vaccines to children in 5 to 12 years age group after a long haul and settling of three waves of the pandemic. The Himalayan nation currently has over 160 active cases of coronavirus. After a long haul and settling of three waves of COVID-19 pandemic, Nepal from Thursday rolled out Pfizer-BioNTech vaccines for 5 to 12 years age group provided by the United States under the COVAX facility. Students stood in queues at their schools to get their first dose of the anti-COVID vaccine. Under the vaccination campaign, children aged 5 to 12 in 27 out of 77 districts will be administered the first dose from June 23 to 29 and the second dose from July 18 to 24. Likewise, in the second phase, children in 50 districts will be given the first dose from August 21 to 27 and the second dose from September 12 to 17. 
I am feeling really good because uh, until now only some adults and older children have gotten the vaccination and are safe from the co coronavirus. But now even younger children will be safe from COVID-19. So it's really good to see that uh, uh, even children from the world are now safe from COVID-19. Nepal received 2.2 million doses from the U.S. on June 19 through COVAX facility. Nepal was the first nation in South Asia to report COVID-19 case in late 2019 after it first emerged in China's Wuhan. The Himalayan nation currently has 163 active cases with 11,952 deaths so far. More on news from Nepal. The recent decision to hike prices of petrol and diesel in Nepal has led to massive protests in the country. On Thursday, members of the Youth Association of Nepal and the Youth Union belonging to the opposition CPN-UML took to the streets to vent their anger and protest against the price hike in the capital. In the wake of the recent petrol price hike, the members of the Youth Association of Nepal and the Youth Union of the Opposition Communist Party of Nepal Unified Marxist-Leninist CPN UML held massive protest on Thursday evening. The protesters marched towards parliament with live torches in their hands and chanting anti-government slogans demanding the resignation of the Prime Minister and the Finance Minister. Nepal police resorted to the use of force as the hesitating side tried to enter the lane with heavy traffic with live torches, following which the agitated parties started pelting stones at security forces and damaged a government-owned vehicle which was passing by the protest site. As per the protest organizers, several protesters have been injured during the clashes. The state-owned syndicate Nepal Oil Corporation NOC on Monday raised the price of one litre of petrol and diesel by 12 and 16 percent respectively. The government under the Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deuba has been facing mounting pressure after the hefty hike in the price of petroleum. On Monday, the House Speaker had ruled the government to come forward with the reason for the unprecedented hike in petroleum prices after the members of parliament demanded an answer from the government. Nepal Oil Corporation has raised the price of petrol to Rs 199 per litre and diesel to Rs 192 with effect past Monday midnight. NOC in a statement stated that the Russia-Ukraine war is the sole reason affecting the international fuel market and prices were adjusted in line with the international market. With fuel prices soaring through the roof, people have been looking for alternatives for their mode of transportation. A man from India's northern Jammu in Kashmir is going viral for his creative solution as he has created a car powered by solar energy. Bilal Ahmed, a mathematics teacher from Srinagar district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir, has created the first ever electrical car run by solar power in the Union territory. He worked hard for 11 years to turn his dream into a reality. Bilal says the idea behind his innovation lies in his wish to create a car with all luxurious facilities that did not bleed one's pocket and could be affordable. Bilal watched and studies about various luxurious cars which were made since 1950. Then, with the help of internet, he started making modifications and it cost him around 50 to 60 lakhs to build this unique car. यूं ही मैंने सोलर पैनल का कांसेप्ट सोचा तो मैंने बोला क्यों नहीं मैं इससे एक अच्छा प्रोजेक्ट बनाऊं क्योंकि मैंने इसी साल मैंने टाइम्स ऑफ इंडिया में देखा था कि आगे 10 साल के बाद कि ऐसा मतलब हो जाएगा कि पेट्रोल का जो प्राइस है वो इंक्रीज हो जाएगा मैंने बोला वो ज्यादा अच्छा रहेगा और साथ साथ उस प्रोजेक्ट को भी मैं काम करूंगा the car solely runs on the electrical energy which is generated by the monocrystalline solar panel. According to Bilal, the car has the features at par with other luxury cars. Bilal's innovation has spread on social media like wildfire. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.